Hero are dropping their first ever digital NFT drop on Thursday and I'm incredibly excited about it. So today I'm going to take you through everything that you need to know about this drop, what's going to be a part of it and some of the special things that happen by collecting it. So let's get started. Welcome everyone, my name is Andy and I appreciate you taking some time out of your day to come watch this video on the channel. Just before we get going, if you are enjoying the content and you want to support me further, you can hit a subscribe button. If you want to support me further than that, you can join the membership. All right, so we've talked about Hero a few times now and I'm getting even more excited about it. I understand there's a few people who are maybe not as excited about it as I am at the moment, but it's just been really cool to see something different come out, something from DC as well. The reason I got into Vivi was because of Batman and because Batman is sort of at the heart of this too, it gets me even more excited about it. But Hero have been doing quite a lot of good things as of recently about what they pushed for, about their marketing, what they're actually working on and how their app is set up because competitiveness is a part of all of it. So having leaderboards and ways that you can compete with other people who are also collecting, whilst also getting special rewards for completing said sets, this can make it more interesting and can get you more hooked onto something fairly easily. So we have now the art that's gonna be coming out for all of these cards in this drop tomorrow. And we also have more information on just what to expect and sort of how to go about it, as well as some special things in the background. So let's talk about it a little bit further. As we've stated before, this drop is gonna have 10,600 packs with a total of 31,800. They're going to cost $50 and there's going to be three cards per pack. In the public and whitelist sale, there's going to be a maximum of 10 packs that you can buy for both. And if you're in the whitelist and you buy 10 packs, you're not able to buy another 10 once the public sale is out. So 10 is the maximum. And what it's also said is that you can sell unopened packs on the marketplace, but you're not able to transfer this to Immutable X or Layer 1 for that matter. You can only sell them on the marketplace there and are then able to spend it in that marketplace. So that is the case for that, just in case anyone is a little bit worried about what it is and what's sort of happened with it. From the thread here, we can see that our first digital exclusive drop will be here at 12 p.m. PST on March the 31st and will be available in our launch regions of the US, UK, Brazil, and India. And the whitelist drop will run from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. So if you're a part of the whitelist, you're gonna be able to get it from 8 till 11 a.m. If you're in the public sale, then you're gonna get it at 12 p.m. Now, pre-registration for the drop is live so make sure your app's up to date and the register ends by today so i think you've just got to make sure if you're watching this now go sign up for it make sure you're a part of that registering puts you in a randomized queue for the drop and when the public drop goes live notifications will go out based on order in queue to manage demand on the system when it is your turn to purchase you'll get a notification based on what you select email is default and you'll be able to purchase anytime while supplies last if the drop sells out before your ticket is called you'll receive an email notification that the drop is sold out in which case you can check the secondary market. Public and whitelist sale all have 10 pack purchase limit as I've just said and fees are paid on deposit. If you have a net balance of 50 in the app that will be enough to purchase one pack in primary sale. So make sure you deposit before the drop. This is an important aspect. On Vivi you don't need to do that. On here you have to deposit before the drop. So if you're a part of the public sale then you're probably going to have to take sort of a risk on potentially getting the drop if you're actually wanting to get in on it and actually try to do it. Whitelist spots were given out random draws due to community members, early supporters, AMA, community leaders, and some of those that have pre-ordered. And we still have a few spots to give out. So if you actually go onto their Discord, you're going to potentially get into some of these whitelist sort of giveaways. I happen to win one of the Dino giveaways. I don't even know how, but I will take it. And I'm very, very happy with that. Didn't get given any whitelist spots because I'm a content creator or anything like that. I've not been in contact with the team. So by chance, I managed to win one of the giveaways, which I'm really, really happy about. Two packs are being purchased by the team which is kind of understandable if members team wants to purchase them they have to pre-register for the public just like everyone else and i thought this was so cool will you be able to grab the one-to-one -one mythic jace fox batman card and this card is just beautiful i can show this a little bit further because it's actually in the app now and we can see it that's obviously a little bit of a rundown of what we're expecting to get what we're going to be getting and how it's sort of going to move as of tomorrow so again if you're a part of the whitelist you're going to be getting in early so if you are a part of that and you know you're a part of that please make sure to get between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. PST before the public goes live. And if you don't manage to get it and you're just in the public, then 12 p.m. PST on the 31st will be the time for you to actually go on and you'll get a notification about when. Let's have a rundown then of the cards and the mints and sort of what they are. Now here, obviously, we can see this digital overview of what we got. And we've got the commons, uncommon, superiors, epic, legendary, and mythic. Now the mints for this are actually 
a lot lower than I'd expected, even though I knew how many cards there actually were. But even if we go from superior to mythic, we're going 800 mints maximum. There's 400 mints with the epic, there's 100 mints with the legendary, and then obviously you've got the Jace Fox Batman, which is the one of one. But even with the commons, there's only 1600 commons. And if we're taking people who are buying more than one box, they're selling unopened boxes, you know, there's a lot of room here for potential profits if these cards do sell out and if this is actually quite a big hit. Let's then have a look at the collection and what we should be expecting. Is it going to be good? Is it going to be designed well, just like the physical ones that we're waiting for? Well, yes, exactly that. <laughs> they are beautiful. We have the cards here. This is Poison Ivy and this is a common. There's only 1600 editions of those. We obviously go down here. We see stuff like Deadshot. We have Red Hood. We have Deathstroke. You know, these cards are really, really beautiful. And once we get further down as well and we get into the more superior and then epic and all that sort of stuff you know these cards this joker is just that is one i really really want that joker is beautiful that is a really 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 nice card and of course we come down here this is the batman legendary this is the 100 editions of this and then we've got the 100 editions of the riddler as well now you will notice there's a second one here and this is the mythic of the one of one and the riddler of the 100 editions now this does say batman universe leaderboard poster what we believe right now now is that if you're in the top 100 of the leaderboard or I think as if you complete the set you will get this Riddler card for free by actually doing it. This Riddler card is awesome. It is so so cool and it is what I'm going to be aiming for. I do plan to try and get this one. I want to get this one. I want to be in that top 100 spot. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be able to get there but we will try our best and I'm not sure if they're doing it based on where you are in the leaderboard or if you complete the set because I don't know how many people are actually going to be able to complete the set when we're talking about those who sell in the market, who don't sell in the market, who open their packs, who don't open their packs. You know there's a lot of variables there so there might not even be 100 people who can even complete this set. And that goes to show that I think maybe at a point they'll snapshot something where it'll be the top 100 people on the leaderboard for this asset anyway and for this 30 collection to then give the Riddler to them. So if you are planning on doing it then you're probably wanting to try and pick up these legendaries and these epics on the market if you can. Of course you're probably having a better chance when it comes to the commons and that sort of stuff to be able to get them. When it comes to the odds then of getting something like this, do we have good odds? Are we going to be able to get the legendaries? Well, let's have a look at the percentage rarities and what you can actually get. Now here, common, you've got a 45% chance of getting a common, a 33% chance of an uncommon, a 15% of superior, 5% of epic, 0.63 of legendary, and then of course the mythic being the one of 10,600 packs, one mythic card added at random on top of the Batman Universal Digital Drop. So that is the case, there's only going to be one in there, of course, one in 10,600 but the rest of them you know that legendary of 0.63% is quite low so that's gonna be a hard one to pull if you do manage to get that you are on a good front to be in that top 100 spot because one of the things we were talking about there are the leaderboards and you might be a little bit confused about the leaderboards what points you can get for that how you can get more points and sort of what it actually works with for it the first part of this is about the point system how each tier reward works each tier has a base amount of points and it rewards the lower the mint number the more points get added on top of its base points so while the common tier has 10 base points lower mints can get you up to 50 points and as a result it's possible to have a common card with a lower tier number that gives you a higher score than the leaderboard than an uncommon card with a higher tier number. How Hero works is that the mints are printed or made in order. So if you get A1, that is the first ever one that was made, meaning you're going to get 50 points if you have A1 of the common. And if you have a lot higher of the uncommon, you could potentially only get 20 points or 25 points as the sort of base points that you're getting because the mint number is higher. This is why low mints actually matter here and this is going to be important. Now I'm sure the mints are randomized from the drops that you're getting so if you're in the public sale or the whitelist I don't think it will matter which ones you buy. They'll all probably be in random packs anyway but this is just the case for it. This is why the lower mint numbers actually matter because the more points that you get the lower mints that you have the higher you're going to climb on the leaderboard and the potential to have that Riddler card in your assets by the time they take that snapshot or however they actually do it. So right now if we go onto the leaderboards we can see here that Scabby is still at the top. Here we can see the sort of chat that they're going for, the superior ones, the limited movie edition. So you're going to be able to see the leaderboard directly to what people are actually doing. So the leaderboard will be different for the digital drop. 
And here, of course, you're going to have to preload into it to get the packs. This is the pack that's going to be coming. You know, the invites begin, so we're going to be able to do it from there. You're going to be able to get three in this pack. And that is obviously what leads to the digital collection that you can get here. What about my market strategy? What am I sort of aiming for this or my plans for it? Well, because this is the first of many that they're planning to do, the first is usually quite significant than others. And I don't know if people are going to really attribute how rare these could potentially be or the full collection. So with me, I'm potentially going to buy 10 packs of the maximum that I can actually buy and keep two unopened. This is just the case of having that potential of having one unopened that could have a legendary in it, that could have a superior in it. And who knows, if the mythic never gets pulled and someone's got an unopened pack, that will be absolutely nuts. But I'm guessing someone will pull it. I'm going to try to complete this set as best as I can. I just don't know how much it's going to cost in order to do that. Because we don't really have the data on the sales price right now, it'll be quite hard to distinguish what these are going to be. Because these are actually a part of the sales of the physical versions as well. So we are seeing some sales here and there for what they are now of course if we go to the highest price we can see sales here of like 181 eth now i really have no idea what's going on there there's probably some shady stuff happening but we have seen some sales in like the 0.1 region the 0.2 region i know there's been a few others so there is things that are actually selling on the market right now is isn't that much eth but it still is something to be there because these are the digital versions and this is the first ever digital drop I think these could sell for more purely because the addition sizes are very small too. The highest addition sizes you're getting for the commons are only 1600, which is really, really low. And considering people can buy 10 packs maximum, I think the majority of people are not just going to buy one pack. I think the majority in the whitelist will buy more than one. And then I also feel the majority in the public will probably buy more than one as well. Even if it's two or three, that's still taking off more of the unique ownership when it comes to this. You've then got to think about the people who are going to hold these because there's already a leaderboard and a reward for the leaderboard already set out. So this is going to be really, really interesting to see what these prices will actually do, how they will fluctuate, and the amount of people who are actually going to purchase these in order to complete their sets. Because if we're taking 10 packs and say I'm opening eight of them, then that means I'm only getting, what, 24 cards than that. That means I cannot complete the set with just those packs that I'm opening, and that's from eight different packs costing $400. So it is going to probably cost quite a a lot to actually complete this set and I might not even be able to do it but if I manage to get some of them and I can work my way up over a period of time maybe I can find my way closer to the top of that list and actually moving forward with that. But I would love to hear your thoughts on this drop. Are you excited for it? Is it something that you're going to be getting involved in or are you sitting back in the sidelines and sort of waiting to see how it all plays out? I'd love for you to let me know down below. I know the video on the screen right now will be something you'll love to watch. Have a fantastic day.